It's 1969. Detroit is the undisputed king of V8 engines. Ford and Chevy dominate the world with their legendary power plants. But 9,000 miles away, in a factory near Melbourne, Australia, a small team of engineers is about to do something absolutely insane. They're going to build a V8 engine that's better than anything Detroit has ever made. And here's the kicker. Nobody outside Australia even knows it exists. This is the story of the Iron Lion, the Australian V8 that rewrote the rules of performance engineering, dominated motorsports for three decades, and forced the automotive giants to rethink everything they knew about building a V8. January 1965, General Motors Holden Headquarters, Australia. The engineers have a problem. Actually, they have several problems. Ford Australia just announced they're bringing the legendary 289 V8 down under. Chrysler's about to unleash the Valiant with American V8 power. And Holden? They've got absolutely nothing to compete. But here's where it gets interesting. The bean counters present two options. Import an American V8 design and manufacture it locally, the safe choice. Or option two, design and build their own V8 from scratch. Now, most companies would take the safe route. After all, why reinvent the wheel when Detroit is already perfected the V8? But the Holden team, led by Fred James and a Latvian engineer named Ed Sillins, saw something everyone else missed. They believed they could take the best ideas from Chevrolet, Oldsmobile, Pontiac, Buick, and Cadillac, and combine them into something completely unique, something lighter, something better suited for Australian conditions, something extraordinary. The design target? A V8 that weighed just 525 pounds, significantly lighter than equivalent American engines. For context, that's about 100 pounds lighter than most comparable V8s of the era. The accountants thought they were crazy. Detroit executives were skeptical, but Sillins, who literally worked on V-1 rockets for the Luftwaffe before immigrating to Australia, wasn't intimidated. He started with a wooden mock-up based on his sketches in April 1965, and then something remarkable happened. But Sillins designed wasn't just another V8, it was a masterclass in engineering innovation. First, the external oil pump. Every American V8 had its oil pump buried in the bottom of the engine, but Sillins mounted it above the sump. Why? Because Australia drives on the left. This single innovation made the engine easier to fit around steering components in right-hand drive cars. The starter motor? Passenger side instead of driver side. Again optimized for right-hand drive. The cylinder banks staggered with the driver's side pushed forward, not for performance, for packaging, for making the engine actually fit in Australian cars without compromising on space. But here's where it gets really clever. The aluminum timing case and water pump, lightweight components that shaved critical pounds off the engine while maintaining durability. The bore spacing matched the Chevrolet small block at 4.4 inches, but that's where the similarities ended. Everything else, the external oil pump, the die-cast aluminum timing chain housing, the distributor driven from the rear of the cam, were uniquely Australian. October 1966, the first prototype fires up. Four days later, it catastrophically fails when metal debris causes an oil pump seizure. Most teams would quit. Sillins pushed forward. By June 1967, they had it figured out. The engine that would change everything was ready. The Holden V8 debuts in the HT series in two configurations, the 253 cubic inch economy version and the 308 cubic inch performance beast. But it wasn't just a street engine. This thing dominated motorsports. Formula 50,000, Australian Touring Car Championship, the legendary Bathurst 1000. The Holden V8 crushed the competition.
the same company that built Jack Brabham's 1966 Formula One championship winning engine, Repco, took the Holden V8 and prepped it for Formula 50,000 racing. It won repeatedly. In touring car racing, the Holden V8 became legendary. From 1969 to 1995, it powered countless victories at Bathurst, Australia's most prestigious race. But then, in the mid-1980s, disaster struck. nineteen eighty five Holden announces they're discontinuing the v eight the reason it can't run on unleaded fuel, which is about to become mandatory. The public response was immediate and furious. A grassroots campaign called v eight till ninety eight exploded across Australia. Thousands of letters flooded Holden's offices. The message was clear: kill the v eight and you kill Australian automotive culture. Holden reversed course. Engineers scrambled to redesign the engine for unleaded fuel. They succeeded, but they didn't stop there. In 1988, they gave the Iron Lion electronic fuel injection, sequential injection, roller cam lifters. By the time the VT Commodore arrived in 1997, the Holden V8 was producing 220 kilowatts in 5.7 liter form. More power, better efficiency, cleaner emissions. The engine that was supposed to die in 1985 lived on until 1999, outlasting the very campaign that saved it. Over 500,000 Holden V8 engines were built. They powered everything from family sedans to race cars to water ski boats. So did Ford and Chevy copy it? Not directly, but the influence was undeniable. The lessons learned from the Holden V8 about weight reduction, packaging optimization, and design flexibility rippled through GM's global engineering divisions. This wasn't just an engine. It was proof that a small team of passionate engineers working 9,000 miles from Detroit could innovate at the highest level, the Iron Lion, Australia's V8, the engine the world forgot but should never have underestimated. And somewhere on a cold morning, one still fires to life just to remind the world what excellence sounds like.